she had 18,000 pounds in baby milk tins wrapped up in duct tape, hidden in her house, ready for what? Ready for this guy to put a brick across the back of my head. That's when it got really scary. What was your upbringing like? I was uh, an academic child. I did what I was told. I was, um, I was happy to, to work hard, um, trying to make the most of things, I think, uh, trying to make my parents proud of me. University was great. I really made the most of, of certainly of the first year. Um, it was, I took the opportunity to be a completely different person. Come the second year, that's when I, I met Victoria. Um, things started off really well. When you first met Victoria, why were you drawn to her? What was she like? She was bubbly, enthusiastic. She was, um, she was really exciting. She represented um, somebody who was interesting and interested. Um, she was very interested in me, and things started to get very intense um, very quickly. It was intense, it was uh, a new relationship, we were in each other's pockets. As it went on and that continued, there was no, there's no let up. It, it, it didn't stop being that. By the end of the second year, it was a, it was that times a hundred. It had moved from being around each other all the time to being around each other with nobody else all the time. There were, there were people who, who said to me, are you sure things are, things are, are things okay? But it's very difficult for me, for, I think for, for, for men and young men in particular to say, no, it's not okay. I don't like it. At, at the time, I, I didn't know what an abusive relationship looked like for me. I recognize now that that's what it was. Um, in the way in which there was, uh, I was controlled, in the way in which I was maneuvered, manipulated. The term coercive control didn't exist, um, certainly not for me. I didn't know what that was and, and whether or not, why that would even be applicable to me. Um, the way in which things were created to be my opinion. Um, I didn't have an opinion other than our opinion. I didn't make any decisions. It was very difficult to, and that's very difficult to explain because when I met people, I was making decisions all the time, but those decisions were always couched with, well, what would Victoria prefer me to do? What does she want me to do? I stayed after university for another year while she finished her course and we moved in um, to a separate house together and that gave us a reason not to see anybody almost and I couldn't go anywhere without first making sure that she was happy for me to go or for us both to go um, and that kind of total control um, was certainly something that became became part and parcel of, of who I was and the and who we were as as a as a couple. So she was insisting that it would just be you two. It was all on her terms. There was always a reason. There was always a justification. You know, if if I if I loved her, then why do we need to go out? You know, what's the point? She was my life. She was my reason, and that's what she wanted. Every single step is a small step. Every single move is entirely reasonable. It's, um, you know, going to college, going to university, going to work, and then all of a sudden you turn around and you realize that's all you're doing. You're, you're going to work and then coming home and not doing anything else. There's, there's no, there is no social life. There is no um, reason to do anything or be anywhere other than with her. And so, again, it was a one of those small, 
incremental logical steps. Um, we were together, we were married, then we have kids. So I was, I was 26 when, uh, when my daughter was born and all of a sudden, you know, Victoria got pushed to second place um, and she didn't like that. How long were you in this relationship with Victoria? Um, in total, so we met in, um, we met in 1999 um, and uh, I separated after my, um, my daughter was about one and a half. So about uh, 2007, middle of 2007, towards the end of 2007. So once you decided to leave the relationship, how did Victoria immediately respond? For a short time, everything was okay. Um, in the same way that everything was, was okay when we got together. It didn't last long um, because I left and she was very angry about that. And she w perhaps wanted to, to exact some level of punishment, some level of re-establish some level of control. Things started to, to ramp up. I started getting requests which were more and more extreme. Um, I would be asked to travel two hours on a on the drop of a hat in order to see my daughter um, for a day and then and then bring her back. Or plans would change halfway through that and say, well, now she's no longer there, she's here. Um, I would be shut out from various decisions. I had to make a decision that I had to put everything else second and put her and put my daughter f first. And that's what I did. That's the point at which everything started to go wrong. Victoria was remarried. Her husband, she had told him that I had hurt her. She had let him know in no uncertain terms how dangerous I was. I think his, what he did next was naive and, and a shame. Um, he attacked my car and set fire to my car and set fire to my house. And so what he did was wrong. Um, and what he did put my life and the life of my family in, in danger. But the way the decision that, that got him to that place was exactly the same decision process that she had perfected on me. And with Wayne, he attacked your house. Oh, how did he get caught for that? And how come she didn't end up in, in prison for that? They were both arrested. Um, she was released without charge. Um, she wasn't there. Um, she couldn't be placed. And of course, the other thing is, is that Wayne never, never described that she was um, connected in any way. Um, he denied uh, even doing it himself. Um, he was he was convicted of it, but he always he pled he pled not guilty. Um, and um, as as a result, they the police didn't and couldn't connect Victoria to it. They there was several pieces of, of evidence um, that connected Wayne, not least. A recording, um, a nine 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 recording, um, that connected him to the, to the case. So she tried to persuade a series of men to murder you, essentially. Like, what was her rationale, and how was she persuading them? Um, the 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 modus operandi was was the same. Um, to paint me as a, as a person, as, as a terrible human being, as, as worthy of punishment, as worthy of um, being dealt with. Victoria was, was able to uh, move and manipulate 
relationships and conversations and friendships uh, incredibly easily. De depending on, on the, the type of, of pe people that she spoke to, varying degrees of success. Thankfully, for me, some of these guys, of course, said that they didn't want to have any part of it. Um, and, and some were more open to the suggestion. Once these guys had said no, then she moved on and, and got and found somebody else who would be, who she thought might be willing to, to do it. And that's how we moved on through, um, in the end, it was five, five guys that, that I am aware of. The way in which Victoria was was recorded um, by talking to somebody who, by all accounts, seemed to be far more professional, certainly purported to be more professional than any of the other guys that she had spoken to. Prices were discussed, methods were discussed. That recording was then put to trial. Um, she pleaded not guilty. She said that it was a um, a joke. It's, she said that it was a, you know, a way in which to let off steam against an old ex. And in abusive relationships, which I now recognize mine was, it's always the pattern that gives it away. And her pattern was this. It wasn't one joke. It wasn't one thing. It was the sustained series of actions, the series of intentions that took us to a point where she had 18,000 pounds in baby milk tins wrapped up in duct tape, hidden in her house. Ready for what? Ready for this guy to put a brick across the back of my head. That's when it got really scary. The trial was um, two weeks of very difficult, very difficult events. I was expecting to be called um, to give evidence, but, but I wasn't. Um, I was really surprised that actually the defense took my statement and, and, and just agreed. Finally, at last, someone believed me, someone could stand up and say, yes, that happened, and it happened to you. That was an incredibly fulfilling feeling. It, 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 it meant probably more than all, almost anything else. Okay, I was an extreme example, but I, I wasn't the only example. You know, There are lots of um, aspects of my story that, that are applicable to lots of different men, women, reaching those people, reaching those guys, reaching the guys who don't think that they're in that kind of difficult relationship. Recognition that it is a problem is one step. It's difficult to ask for help and finding someone who you trust to ask for help. But there are more and more people out there, connections, that can help. Talk to anyone. Talk to the people at the bus stop. Talk to friends, family, anybody. But talk to somebody. How do you feel towards Victoria now? I feel... I feel that she has wasted so much opportunity. I'm not going to give her the control and the power to keep on affecting me and, and, and our life in the way that she was for a very long time. We have made a, a beautiful young lady who is looking at the rest of her life with 
anticipation, with excitement. Um, and it is a wasted opportunity, a shame that, that she has missed that. And that is something that she has to live with. That's her life sentence. He looked young, he did look young, but it was after the, the marriage that I knew that he was twice my age, so I was 15, he was 30. I knew, I knew he was gonna rape me, and that's what happened. And it, it became like every single day, 